Um, hello, everybody, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, this is Rajit uh, from Lanka Wildlife, and today I'm having a conversation with uh, uh, Douglas Ranasinghe, uh, who has written uh, one of the most comprehensive accounts about how uh, the Singharaja rainforest was saved uh, with the assistance of one uh, uh, one man, um, Thilo Hoffman. Uh, who um, lived in Sri Lanka for and worked in Sri Lanka for about 60 years. Uh, now, um, Douglas, um, you have been president of the uh, Wildlife and Nature Protection Society. Would you like to tell us something about yourself? Yeah, uh, now, actually, <clears throat> I joined the Wildlife Society in 1971. Mm. The day, these, uh, the year, this Singaraja um, campaign was uh, launched. Uh, so my uh, interest in wildlife, I uh, had a real uh, close connection with Mr. Hoffman and uh, I have been uh, with him to Singaraja also when the uh, uh, Singaraja was being cut and actually he took the, I, 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 immediately he took me to the committee and uh, the committee members also visited this place and saw the devastation they were doing. So what Hoffman did was he uh, uh, stayed in this forest for about three days and wrote a memorandum, you know it, no? His memorandum was uh, uh, actually submitted to the then prime minister, but uh, he did a very intelligent thing. That is, uh, he got all the stakeholders to sign it. He, he, he first uh, went through the jungle for three days and recovered recorded all what he could see and all the interesting things. And he said, uh, this forest can be destroyed, but never created. So, yeah, yeah. so Douglas, that's a very important I, thing. Douglas, if I can disturb you for a little bit. Yeah, now, yeah. you you, um, you probably joined the Wildlife and Nation Protection Society in, at some official capacity in 1971. And then you became one of the leading, uh, leading, uh, leading people who was broadcasting uh, uh, information about wildlife conservation in the in the Sinhalese language. Is that right? Yes, because uh, that was that happened after Singaraja campaign was over. After Singaraja campaign was over, the main uh, Buddhist monk, that is the person who was uh, in charge of the Rohno area. He, came, he, he also signed the memorandum. So he came to Mr. Hoffman and said, now we have won this case, but you must take this message to the village level, grassroots level. Yes. So uh, launch it in Singhala. So what he uh, what Hoffman did was he appointed me to a thing called action committee. And he gave instructions to put up a report. So we gave him a lot of ideas, uh, action committee. I was the chairman of the action committee. We informed him first, we have to educate the single children by actually having a magazine for safeguard the environment. That is the first magazine. Douglas, Douglas, yeah. sorry for yeah. disturbing. What is this year? No, roughly okay. about, what, is, what is this year? Roughly about, we're talking about when here? That is 76, 1976. 76. Okay. Yeah. Okay. By, okay. By, by 1976, this yes. matter of Singaraja was settled. Yes, yes. Uh, then uh, the the Buddhist monk wanted us to take this message to the grassroots level, and I, uh, uh, with uh, the committee members, uh, action committee, we put up a report saying that first thing is we have to start a magazine and uh, get this printed and sent to all schools uh, to educate them. Second, uh, uh, they needed the material in Singhala. So I wrote a book on birds called Asrimat Kurloke. That's the first book on birds in Singhala. Yes. That also was uh, printed by the uh, by the Wildlife Society. Then uh, the birds didn't have Singhala names. Then we had a committee to draw, put names for the birds. That's called the Sri Lanka Avifauna list. Yes. Then after that, we said, okay, uh, then we must have nature clubs in schools. So yes. When I, 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 I left uh, the society, I mean, in 19, uh, in 2011, there was 500 school nature clubs registered with us and almost uh, I have visited all of them. 
and we gave lectures and educated them. Then the magazine was printed. The government was very supportive. The education department bought 3,000 copies uh, yearly. I mean, uh, 6,000 yearly and sent to all schools free. And the education thing started from there, from single uh, children and got to know what is uh, wildlife protection. Actually, I don't know to mention a name, a certain minister who told me, Douglas, I learned wildlife conservation from you. He was the minister of wildlife conservation at yes. one time. Yes, I, yes. I asked, how? 1976, I was a school child. I got your book, Warren magazine. Oh, wow. I read from that and I got, so people don't know much about it because I don't know to tell. Uh, his name and he, he was so nice to call me to his office and tell this, give this information. Yes, yeah, so D Douglas, I want to ask you, uh, how did you, uh, how did you um, work out the names of, of, of the birds in, in, uh, in Sri Lanka? How did you give them the Sinhalese names? Uh, did you, do you, yeah. did you work with somebody? Yeah, yeah. There was a person called Dr. T.S.U. Silva. You may have heard, he has written a lot of books the and Silva, he's a yes. famous bird photographer. Yes. He died yes. recently. Uh, so what happened was uh, the wildlife committee uh, uh, invited both of us, Dr. Silva and myself, to submit a report. I mean, give all the names. And uh, I, I, I actually I met him in Kurnagal, his home. We got together and drafted this one. What the method we adopted is there were birds with no single name. So we gave new single names. There were several names for one bird. So we gave one one name. Yes. Like that, uh, there, there was about 428 species of birds at that time. So yes. we did that as, as a pioneering effect and wildlife uh, society accepted it and Major Phillips, the checklist of birds of Sri Lanka. I have a letter from Phillips also. He accepted and put uh, in his uh, 1978 edition all the singular names in that checklist. Okay, okay. Anonymated now, checklist of birds of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. This this, um, this list of bird names is still available, isn't it, in print? I mean, is your book Asiramat Kurulaloka? Is it still in print, or is there another another book yeah, that people can look it's at? In the, if, it's in the fourth edition but i heard they have put up a fifth edition also and it is uh, okay. re-edited and it's available now and people are reading it uh, uh, with enthusiasm okay okay now now douglas i want to ask you now you were saying that uh, the matter has already been settled roughly about 1976 but as i yeah. understand it um the, the the forest was actually protected in 1978 when uh, when faith when uh, when Tilo Hoffman actually went and made the president of Sri Lanka because the government changed didn't it didn't the government change yeah, the government changed but i am not too sure of the year what happened was Tilo had a good idea he said you have to follow up everything till the last so in yes. in this uh, rohan petigadu's review yes uh, I, I, I like to mention it hoffman demonstrated for the first time how persistent focus civil society activism could make even the most obstinate of governments change their mind. Yes. And I saw doing several large tracts of island natural landscapes. So uh, actually, uh, till the matter was over, till the Singaraja uh, thing decision was taken, he followed up this. And when the government changed, uh, Mr. Jayajawadhan was uh, the president and he went and met him and gave the full story. Yes, yes. So he, he immediately ordered the Canadians to go home and yes. Singhara Alja was saved. But exact date, I can remember is 76, but it may be 78 also. I'm no, 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 sure. actually, actually. He met, he actually... met there, yeah, right now. Yes, I'm actually, uh, I'm actually reading your, well, I, I have a copy of your book right now. So, uh, I it's I just want to see if we can work out the that year when yeah, uh, when me. when he met with the met the president. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I just want to say that uh, it's it's a very interesting book uh, about. Um, I'm just trying to say it's about five hundred. It is 500 mentioned five hundred and twelve pages. Yeah, and lots and lots of appendices at the back with all sorts of uh, original documents uh, that talk about the history. Sorry. Uh, it's just that okay. I'm, I'm on the chapter now, saving 
saving Singharaja. And yeah. you were mentioning the Canadian. So basically, there was a Canadian plywood company that was uh, that was actually uh, uh, the the forest was being fed into kind of uh, plywood mills. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, uh, Canadian company was the uh, people who cut it. Uh, I mean, the destroy cutting the forest, but uh, it was by uh, some other people who put up the factory in uh, Avisavel area. Yes, yes. Um, Douglas, I, I, um, when we talk about Singharaja, we are actually talking about uh, a large, a very large uh, area of forest originally. Um, yeah. that, that, you know, like it's not just the current, current day Singharaja reserve. Although mm -hmm. when Thilo Hoffman was writing, uh, writing the summary about protecting Singharaja uh, in probably about 1972, and mm. you have you have it in one of your appendices. He limited it to about twenty thousand acres. Is that right? Twenty-two thousand. Yeah, yeah, that Twenty-two thousand acres. Yes. Yeah. Um. So. I think that in seventy-six, um, it wasn't necessarily looking very optimistic until there was a change of government. Um. So. I think he has written in 1976, he wrote Epitaph for the Forest, Singharaja, 1976 in Loris. Yeah. And, um, and in 1977, so that's the date, in 1977, oh, yeah. a new government yeah. was elected. Mm -hmm. Thilo immediately tried to obtain a personal interview with the Prime Minister J.R. Jayawardena. He succeeded. And then uh, the state decreed that logging in the Singharaja Reserve should cease. So. I suppose we could say that if there was a date when the forest was saved, it was approximately 1977. Is that right? Yeah, that's it's correct. It's correct. Okay. okay. So this might be a this might be a good time for me to read a little passage uh, yeah. from your book, uh, which is actually uh, quoted from uh, Thilo Hoffman, mm -hmm. and uh, it's under the title of uh, the need for a policy. It says politicians and administrators alike regard wildlife and conservation even in this day and age as matters of little consequence. And those who care for the environment in Sri Lanka are belittled as enthusiasts, more or less harmless cranks who need not be taken seriously. Yet the conservation of the country's natural resources has already become a major national issue. And for the good of the people, the most serious notice should be taken of the present situation and of our duty to conserve at least what is left of some important, important natural resources and to rebuild the lost ones. Now, that particular passage could apply even today, couldn't it? Because even today, most politicians and administrators regard wildlife and conservation as matters of little consequence. Yeah, they, they, are, they are not uh, interested at all, at all, at all. Because a lot of uh, um, uh, important uh, act was repealed. Now, uh, to remove uh, earth and other things, rock stones and all, there was an act uh, prohibiting it. So when the new government came, he, they said, no, anybody can remove anything, um, earth, uh, rocks or anything without a permit. So. That's the worst thing that, that happened. So all the people who was putting, um, I mean, removing sand from the rivers also, without permits, they removed what they want. Yes. And earth and stones and all, it, it was real destroying the environment. And Singaraja also was uh, tackled by them and a new road was built. And actually, it's... Surreal, uh, yeah, so let's not let's not get too negative. I mean, the important yeah. thing to, to remember is that generally speaking, politicians don't particularly care about the environment. And this is actually a, a feature. A of, yes, yeah. this is a this is a feature of democracies all around the world. Yeah, uh, because because uh, there's a lot of short termism, short term thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, I think that maybe obviously things are changing now because there are more actors who are all, who are interested in wildlife. Uh, I mean, you know, there was recently a young girl, young girl from Rakwana who was uh, very, very vocal about this, these issues. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So as long as there are these new voices emerging, I think that there's, I think that obviously since the politicians cannot be relied on to deliver the goods when it comes to environmental conservation, except in their, their cases, um, I think that maybe private, uh, private, uh, private actors also have to take a look, have, have to take a role now. Yeah. 
So, uh, but there are NGOs uh, who are really concerned about it and they have gone to courts, there are many court cases. Yes. And there was one positive one where the courts gave a ruling that uh, a certain minister who cut uh, Vilpattu uh, adjoining forest of the national park was ordered that he should uh, replant the whole 2000 acres. He, yes. gave, he gave an order like that. Yes. The, yes. The, the magistrate. Now, now, Douglas, this is one of the most best put together books I have come across. You know, I mean, yes. it's it's a hardback book, uh, 512 pages, full of appendices and very important information. Uh, it's got a dusk jack, dusk, dust jacket, uh, lots and lots of pictures. Yeah. And this is one of the greatest tributes to uh, not just to Philo Hoffman, but to this wildlife wildlife movement that that started off on uh, with you know with his uh, with his connections. Uh, uh, from the uh, from the last century, uh, starting from about 1946. Correct. Now, at that time, Sri Lanka was was a paradise for wildlife. Uh, 1946. That, that's when Thilo came, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thilo came after the Second World War. Yes. And yes. Uh, that is about 46, 47. I think. And he about, came. About uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, from. There onwards, uh, he was really interested in our local wildlife and the jungles and the nature. And he uh, went uh, everywhere and uh, he got a good knowledge of uh, the jungles and the wildlife and also uh, what should be done to protect it. So, so one of the things that, uh, that, I, that I got interested in when I was reading your book was that he talks about being able to see uh, be seeing millions of butterflies flying over Colombo towards Adams Peak. Uh, so at, uh, there used to be a time in Sri Lanka, maybe in the 50s, when you could actually see butterflies flying in their millions, even from Colombo. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, because of this problem, uh, what I mean is uh, now butterflies, these waves are not being seen in Colombo, but it could be seen in uh, uh, Udavalavi area and many other places, but not on large numbers as earlier. So yes. what, uh, what I did was uh, with IUCN collaboration, uh, I was president at that time. I got uh, some money from IUCN and started 100 butterflies gardens in 10 districts of Sri Lanka as president. So yes. I went to all these schools and main thing, I wrote a book, Asirimath, Samana Loke, the wonderful right. world of butterflies, yes. and gave it free to those schools yes. and uh, make them actually injected them with the idea of saving the butterflies. And I told one day I must see these waves going again. So yes. you must plant this type of host plants to get this type of butterfly. And yeah. they were doing it uh, till I retired from the wildlife society. There yes, were 100 yes. schools in 10 districts, not an easy thing. And uh, Dr. Van der Putten, who is the expert on butterflies, was, was with us and he visited many schools with us and gave them practical knowledge how to build a butterfly garden. Yes. Um, of course, Van der Putten has written the leading, the leading, uh, the leading, leading about butterflies butterfly. right now uh, to, replace, uh, to replace the book by Woodward. Uh, yes. and. Uh, at the time that Thilo Hoffman was becoming established in Sri Lanka, many of the great uh, uh, naturalists of Sri Lanka were either quite old or many of them were leaving. Yeah, and correct. I think that one of the most remarkable things about Mr. Hoffman was that he didn't leave. He carried on working working in Sri Lanka at a time when most of the most of the the naturalists were leaving. Uh, I mean, this is partly after independence, and they, you know, they didn't, they were retiring, and various other things, and also they were, they were terrified of losing their money and their estates. So many, many planters also left in the seventies. Yeah. So Tilo Hoffman, uh, to his credit, uh, remained on the island for sixty years. That's a huge period of time in a, somebody's lifetime. Yeah, but the problem is, uh, I believe he was not uh, given the due place because he had to uh, renew his uh, residential permit every year. Yes. So actually he should have given uh, uh, after even the Singaraja was saved citizenship honorary. However, he was given the Lanka Ratna, the most yes. important award yes. one can give to a foreigner. 
because actually for saving singaraj but that to recognize later yes but uh, he, he was expecting a resident visa in any case he didn't get it and now and now he was also uh, the working for this company bowers bowers yeah. is still going strong in sri lanka isn't it yeah bowers is the leading fertilizer importer yes. and not only fertilizer they are doing various other uh, areas also and they are still a leading company in our country and do they do any kind of something to do with plantations uh, douglas uh i am not sure but what they do is they provide the fertilizer to plantations right right but right whether they owned it i don't know but but when hoffman was there there was several plantations and the bowers yes yes now now tilo hoffman was a leading agriculturalist as well as a conservationist and he did a lot of research on how we can improve agriculture and he was very very uh, are uh, very keen to emphasize that this wasn't just about uh, make creating nature reserves this was also about uh, just uh, maximizing the income for the country and all like that economic development can go hand in hand with uh, conservation Do, would you agree with that yes actually um, yeah, so what he said was uh, without uh, without protecting nature we can't protect wildlife Yes. So, 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 so actually, his job was uh, providing fertilizer, but uh, his main interest was wildlife conservation, and uh, it was recognized by everybody. Uh, and uh, uh, what he did was he he was the chairman of the bird club also. Yes. And he identified a lot of uh, areas where earlier they didn't find birds. and uh, then he prepared the wetland list uh, i mean uh, what are uh, the wetlands that should yes, be saved a yes. lot of things he did douglas wouldn't you say that he was actually one of the founders of the ceylon bird club yeah he was the uh, no he was not the founder he uh, founder was uh, philips major philips okay ww philips yes. and he took over from them and uh, he uh, injected the enthusiasm and even we joined them lot of uh, people uh, actually it's uh, very active now yes yes now can i just uh, can i just read another passage uh, that reflects uh, reflects this what we've been talking about it it's uh, this is from tilo hoffman's writings uh, uh, we have to ensure that the entirety of the human environment should remain healthy and sound which means that it must include elements which allow most or all free living creatures to coexist with man this means that there must be trees shrubs forests free water courses ponds natural ecosystems all interspersed in developed areas in a balanced manner this can be attained with proper planning and responsible execution of the plans without in any way diminishing the economic usefulness of the schemes and of human progress on the contrary such ecological planning and implementation will make the final result far better in every respect than it would otherwise be i'm not really sure if i've done justice to that passage but i think that he was actually a, a pragmatic a pragmatic conservationist wasn't he was very keen in combining uh, economics with conservation yes actually you know he he didn't like eco tourism now okay. yeah, what he said was uh, with uh, eco tourism if it if it must the 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 tourists should go to the place but uh, not to destroy the place by putting up bungalows and hotels in eco tourism spots so his idea is you know, like switzerland uh, people should uh, visit the eco tourism place not stay there yes <laughs> and yes, destroy yes. the thing i think he's yes, correct yes 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 i think that i mean that i mean there are so many ways of talking about eco tourism but i think that yes. now now there is more of a trend that people should go walking by foot rather than yeah, have yeah. to always go by vehicles that's correct and and secondly uh, i think you know there are there's new technologies as well i mean people don't even have to visit some of these spaces now we can also use things like camera traps and uh, live cameras all kinds of new things are coming up but you see on uh, overall um, overall he had a he was very holistic he wasn't just talking about forests he was also talking about marine environments wasn't he and uh that sort of thing you know and uh, wasn't he 
yes you know a lot of uh, <clears throat> no, no one was speaking about uh, uh, centuries marine centuries yes. while the uh, dip, uh, society took it up this matter and now the hikadwa and all these uh, marine centuries uh, actually uh, our proposals from our society because he, he he was as you said the holistic he, he entire area he covered yes uh, and um, i think um, uh, lot a lot is due to him but uh, people don't know a lot of areas uh, he has tackled and uh, so, so, and got, got yes. the authorities to follow suit actually now tilu hoffman had the luxury of traveling all over the island i mean he was traveling all over the island climbing mountains and surveying the land and he had lots of ideas about the different sorts of ecosystems for example the uva patanas he had some views about these patanas or patanas and uh, unfortunately many of these uh, heathlands or patanas or sholas have now been taken over by uh, forest plantations uh, of the wrong kind of timber yeah you are correct now now there there, there is a thing called patan ala that is a, a unique uh, plant uh, uh, in the patana uh, normally I, i have seen the plant in horton uh, Pit, pitavala patana in horton in nakals range yes. so he says yes. how can a endemic plant evolve in a patana if it was a earlier grassland or a place where the trees were there the trees yeah. were not there it was natural natural formation a patana he told me so good example is this endemic uh, uh, endemic plant found in the patana is like a grass but you get a, a tube in it i have seen yes. the plant i have gone is to it, the patana is it an I orchid told, is it an, is huh? an orchid by the way I, i wonder if it's an orchid it's in pitavala patana the name i can give later but not now okay 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 we'll, we might try to put a link to it or talk about it yeah. but i understand yeah. that the, one of the endemics that he was talking about was was this orchid uh, that yeah. this uh, very uh, beautiful orchid that's uh, endemic to sri lanka but it's only found in the in the patanas oh but uh, it is not a orchid it's not orchid okay 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 no, i'm sure uh, because Oh uh, you yeah, know he was speaking about the daffodil log in which is found in patanas as well as uh, siripada area right 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 yeah okay. daffodil log okay okay um so he was not just a zoologist he was also something of a botanist i mean he got to know the names of the trees using um, uh, various books at the time and he was always in correspondence with various leading botanists uh, i'm just trying to think of um, uh think of the name of the the famous book about trees that was published in sri lanka in the 50s and in the 60s actually um, it is the handbook of handbook of, of sri you know, lanka or the uh, trees and uh, shrubs of sri lanka there's a book in front of me trees yes. and shrubs of sri lanka yes well so so he, he you know he knew he knew about trees uh, and he um, he had lots of ideas about planting trees he was a good artist so. right right he was so, a good artist he, he drew yes. all those he's in the book he's in the book yeah yeah so now when he was like traveling to singaraja in the 70s to try to preserve it there were people uh, like sam elpeter who was joining him with sam elpeter's children uh, yeah. are these people still around people like sam elpeter Sam Alpert has died, but his son Upali is there, yes. and he's he's also still interested in saving uh, the environment. Uh, so I have been to Sam Alpert's place, and uh, he was a real. Uh, uh, he was vice president of uh, our society, and he helped Hoffman to explore Singaraj and got a lot of information. And he had written an article also in the. in my book about him i think sam alapath has written a introduction right right something you read it it's very nice okay, okay they were very close yes and you also knew people like john and judy banks who have who have done some uh, interesting small books about the wildlife of sri lanka yes they they were great people they were in the committee when i was in the committee yes. and uh, uh, john uh judy banks i read uh, recently in 1969 uh 
there was some committee about uh, Yala and Mr. Bank served in it. I mean, yes, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so that I just want to come back to Singaraj because I think that this is probably one, one of the, the biggest contribution he made. So he was very, very keen to preserve the. Uh, the up the, the the wet zone forests, which were which were completely neglected, generally speaking, uh, from the time of the British. I mean, uh, I'm I'm going to be reading from his uh, these passages at the back from one of the. This is from Appendix Appendix Six. This yeah. is one one of the country's most important natural assets assets is its forests, which are today being cleared and destroyed at such a rapid rate that the critical point when we will actually suffer from this destruction may already have been reached. We need forests, including forest plantations, not only for timber and other produce. Many forests, both in the wet and dry zones, have essential protective functions, such as uh, such, um, such protective forests are all those which cover the tops of hills and mountains, which grow on the steep slopes and along vital watercourses, those which form catchments of rivers and tanks. It is unthinkable that these forests um, it is unthinkable that these forests should be allowed to fall to the axe, yet they are. For what purpose? For only the most marginal type of agriculture. We must conserve these forests for the benefit and well-being of the people, such as we must preserve national parks, sanctuaries, and nature reserves. Such conservation has profound effects on the structure of culture and society. No one will deny the importance of trees and plants and wild animals in the traditional arts and crafts of Sri Lanka yet we let them be exterminated. So uh, Tilo Hoffman wasn't just interested in Singharaja, he was also interested in the peak wilderness and he wanted to turn it into a sanctuary. Now, there, maybe there's been some more be better news in that front recently, is that right? Yeah, yeah, now actually it was made a, a world heritage area. I mean, okay. uh, Siripada, the peak wilderness, but his idea was to make it a, Hill Country National Park, I mean, combine all those areas of Agala yes, yes. and the Kiri and make it the uh, Highland National Park. Uh, they have made it uh, the uh, World Heritage Area. Yes, yes. I mean, this is something that John Still, as you point out in your book, this is something that even John Still was campaigning for from the, from the 1930s. Yeah. Yes. And Tilo was also very keen in establishing forest corridors, wasn't he? Between these yeah, parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, uh, he was instrumental and in not only about Singaraja, the F floodplain national park. Because yeah. he was, uh, he was, uh, he was actually uh, given a post in the uh, uh, Mahavali Authority. Yes. Uh, I think volunteer. He, he did it, and he organized uh, the three. Uh, uh, main national parks now in this uh, area in floodplain. Uh, I mean, um, then. Uh, Waskamwa? Um, yeah, I think Girith. Uh, Waskam, actually, you don't believe myself and another friend was instrumental. Okay, okay, okay. okay. No, no, that's really so, uh, yeah. I can tell the Waskam. Waskam yeah. story, if, even now yeah. I can yeah. tell yeah. it. Yeah, we are very interested. Uh, very because interested. actually, Waskam was to. Was to Shall I uh, yeah, yeah, speak yeah, about yeah. it? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, what happened was uh, Waskamu were to be uh, was to be cut okay. by uh, by uh, because it was the most uh, I mean uh, rarely visited area because it was full of uh, bears. Waskamu yes. means Walaskamu. Right. Yeah. Right. So yes. what myself and one of my friends uh, we said okay we'll visit this place. And uh, we will uh, do something to protect it because uh, it was to be cut for another Mahavali area, like Mahavali, Mahavali A, Mahavali B, like that. Yes. Waskamu uh, also was uh, listed uh, to be uh, uh, cut. So what we did was my, one of my friends and myself, we went uh, met uh, the director of wildlife uh, and told him that uh, we would like to visit the area and give you a report about this matter. 
then uh, what he said was no no i can't allow because it's a strict natural reserve yes and uh, very soon it will be cut yes. then we said uh, to save it allow us to go so uh, later by persuading him he allow us to go yes uh, and we submitted a very good report that this uh, forest should be preserved and uh, what happened was he took this report to the president and said uh, sir now you are going to cut this uh, jungle but it's a very good place to have a national park yes so who is cutting it he asked it's gamini that is the minister yes then he got a call and told him gamini stop cutting waskamur right that is how it is started so yeah. actually it is uh, i can show this book that is uh, so you show me you show me copy of loris yeah loris 125th issue 125th issue yes this story is given in page 86 okay right yeah where 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 the where the director is thanking us for doing it yes so myself and one of my friends called sarath tejasu the two people who uh, was instrumental to get this as a national park so the heading of this article was waskamur national park a significant contribution from the wildlife society so we didn't want to put our names yes. but we are the people who did it otherwise yeah. no waskamur well i got i got a list of some of these uh, mahavali area uh, mahavali national parks that uh, you and uh, atilo uh, and other people were involved in setting up so you've got maduru oya waskamur flood plains and somavatiya Ah, uh, correct. That's a three. He he was really instrumental, and he got it uh, uh, passed as a national park, park three parks. Yes. Uh, so in other contribution he has done is a great thing. Yes. Now I'm very uh, interested uh, that you are mentioning that uh, some um, like Waskamu uh, used to be famous for bears. Yeah. Do you think, do you think that there are still some bears there? Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of bears there. Even when we 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 went four days walking through Waskamu with tents on our shoulders, and yes. uh, there there were bears everywhere. Right. And we, we were not sleeping the nights uh, because uh, facing a bear attack was dangerous. Yes. Uh, yes. So so actually, still there are bears, and one of the best national parks we are having. Yes. Yes. Now, of course, the. the biggest the biggest draw in all of these national parks that brings many many tourists and like this is like the if like if you want to talk about that that if you want to say that sri lanka is actually owned by two classes of being one of them is human beings and the other the other most dominant group of beings that that have also been citizens of sri lanka are the elephants yeah so the elephants at the moment the elephants dominate what used to be the old mahavali uh dry zone area yeah. uh, but obviously the habitat is shrinking and i don't really want to talk too much about elephants because this is a subject that's obviously that's uh, no i i sensitive. like talking about it because yeah, but, i but, also... but we we want to say something positive as well because uh, there are lots of actors who want to promote elephant conservation even now yeah and hopefully i mean maybe if not at the moment because of all the problems going on in the future there are opportunities and there to to build forest corridors and to encourage well to give them a home no the problem of uh, elephants can be solved very easily because uh, there is a village called pokunutan north of udavalave yes. so we are we 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 are one of several of our friends have been there for several year i mean several months and one of my friends have a big bungalow there so the people in uh, pokunutan has solved the uh, elephant problem so they ask him why others can't solve it you know how they oh. have a community electric fence now they have yeah. the electric fence uh, normal put by the department yes. so they have got together and put another fence very close to it uh, with more power what i mean they get the power from the main line yes. and convert it to dc current yes okay yes. and dc current and uh, the elephant will not uh, get killed from it it will yes. be pushed back yes. so one day when we stayed uh, right in the village uh, uh, place uh, the, the 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 farmer came running say come 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 elephant has come that is 5:30 then how do you know so yes. in this room there is a i mean converter and there is a bell fixed to it so yes. when elephant touch the wire 
he yes. get the noise and he know where it is yes. so we went running with him uh, and found that the elephant has touched it and he has fallen back and he has run away and his four acres of paddy not touched by the elephant yes yes so so powerful and yes. uh, actually uh, 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 UK based university has given some money to our one of our local students and he has done a nine month study on this and he is saying 99% effective this community electric fence yes. even Preeti Raj Fernando agrees with it so i when the president came i wrote to him this is the method but as usual it it didn't work well i mean uh, then that the, we, we you see everything you know i mean you you tell you tell the authorities something and it might take about 10 years before something gets done yeah yeah correct yes. so now first you i'm very glad that you've just mentioned preeti viraj fernando he has been one yeah. of the leading leading elephant conservationists how is he yeah. doing now is he doing all right yeah he is still a consultant of the wildlife uh, department yes. and he's a good artist and uh, he, uh, he actually he's the person who drew uh, drawings for my book uh, aswimat kurlok at the start right and he's right. a very good friend of mine and he, he 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 knows the problem and he knows how to tackle it yes. but uh, people should listen to him that's the problem Yes, yes. I mean, hope maybe, maybe, maybe you can persuade him to have a conversation with 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 me and or, or yeah, yeah. somebody, and we can we can share some of our our concerns. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, um, another person that Deepal, Deepal, uh, sorry, uh, that that Tilo Hoffman um, uh, helped and supported quite a lot was is Deepal Varakagoda, who I was just going to mention, and yeah. uh, Deepal Varakagoda discovered uh, discovered a, a new species of owl in Sri Lanka and. I understand that this brought tears to the eyes of Tilo Hoffman when Tilo was discussing this on the telephone with Deepal. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, Deepal uh, found this uh, owl called Serendipus copsaul. He named it, and yes. he gave the scientific name Tilo Hoffmani. He put yes. Tilo's name to it, yes. Yes. and actually, it was after British uh, left or British didn't find this uh, the bird after two hundred. Yes. or dears he found this yes. and mainly because he was a bird club member and a very close uh, collaboration with hoffman yes. and uh, all of us got together and uh, actually helped uh, deepal and uh, it's a unique endemic bird but some yes. people try to show that it's not endemic uh, is a wrong way but the bbc cna all those people recognize and actually there are uh, Cornell University and everybody knows it is a different species. Yes, wants yes. to get the voice and all these things. Yes, and uh, now it is uh, it's in the I think uh, we have thirty four endemic species and it's one of it one of the birds. Now, now one of the one of the things that Tilo Hoffman was uh, tried to emphasize to me and by the way I only met him once. Yeah. I I I feel I feel that I was very fortunate to to meet him. Uh, he told me that he thinks that amateurs are more important than professionals. Uh, that most of the good work in Sri Lanka has been done by amateurs, uh, not necessarily professional scientists who are always doing research, but people who are really on in the field and interested. So I'm really glad to see that maybe there are more amateurs coming up. But do you agree with him on that point? I I hundred percent agree with him because uh, uh, now even Bird Club. was uh, uh, all the data from the period uh, major philips uh, the president is collected by the members of the bird club and uh, all scientific data even international organizations get it from the bird club because yes. bird club uh, are all amateurs mostly amateurs yes and uh, now they call them uh, people scientists or something like that yes. but it however is citizen, citizen scientists citizen scientists huh? citizen scientists ah that's correct citizen yeah, yeah. scientists so yeah. they they give more knowledge uh, than the academic because uh, these people go to the places and they are in the field every time yes. and they have they have time to spend uh, and uh, they speak the local native language and get to know, know the people and get the information of the bird from with a new species and uh, mainly Uh, when a new bird is seen in a national park or any other place they contact them directly and the members of the bird club go immediately yes. get a photograph to confirm it and yes. such birds 
have increased our list actually so we're bird club now, now, douglas may I, yes yes may i ask you are you um, are you a member of the bird club still yeah yeah i am uh, yes. from uh, i mean over 40 years i am a member yes. Yes. Now, some people have accused the Ceylon Bird Club of being a bit elitist, but you, it, we disagree with that, don't you? Elitist, elitist. Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, not elite. Uh, it's all um, educated yes. and yeah. uh, very interested uh, people and uh, they, they don't care about the, actually, they, they don't give much this thing to the people who try to be uh, try to say that they know everything about the birds, but these yes, people yes. know better than uh, those academics. Yes, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. Now, now, you have written this amazing tribute to uh, the conservation movement in Sri Lanka and to the life of Tilo, um, Tilo Hoffman. Uh, so the book is called The Faithful Foreigner, and it was published in 2015. Um, yes. How long did it take you to, uh, to write that book? Uh, it uh, took about two to three years. Then yes. uh, what happened was uh, I finished it uh, by 2004, yes. the draft, yes. and gave, uh, gave it to Mr. Hoffman. Yes. So he was actually really happy. And yes. he said, Douglas, I want to go through it and see if, uh, where areas have been not put together and new things. So yes. I said, OK, you include it. So yes. you won't believe from 2004 to 2014, yes. for 10 years, he kept the book with him. Yes. And I, one day I was a bit annoyed and I told Mr. Hoffman, Mr. Hoffman, now, now enough. So why don't you okay and send it? No, yes. no, Douglas, it's, I am preparing the index. Now yes. see how meticulous he was. He said, without yes. index, worthless a book. So yes. I'm preparing it. And once yes. it's over, I'll send it. Yes. And by 2015, we did it. Yes. But uh, unhappy, I'm unhappy because he didn't see the final product, but right. he saw the draft. Yes. Now, but he, he did live to a grand old age, didn't he? I mean, he was in his 90s. Yeah, he was 90 something. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I think, yes. He, so he lived, um, he was born in 20, uh, um, he was born almost exactly 100, 100 years ago. Yeah. Uh, to, to this point. And he, um, and he died in 2014. Yeah, correct. Um, I mean, I think that the fact that he lived for so long gave him such a huge contact with the wildlife and also the various people who are who are involved in the conservation movement. Yeah. But he, he also received a lot of criticism. I mean, obviously, it is not surprising that, uh, that, uh, that uh, somebody who is trying to get something done gets criticized. Um, uh, I, I, but now that the dust has settled, I think that uh, we can see that he was definitely part of something big, wasn't he? Yeah. As usual, people don't want others to come up or show some new things. So some people were jealous about him, but he didn't give in. So his main name was to see that uh, wildlife and nature is protected in our country. So he didn't worry about uh, others criticizing him. And, uh, and for false things also, he was criticized. I don't want to mention those things. No, I mean, uh, some of them are in your book. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, one thing, uh, he was a great person. Yes, uh, but I mean, we don't we don't really have to be we don't have to be making big uh, statues to him. I yeah. suppose that the I suppose that the that the Singaraja Forest itself is uh, is something of a monument to uh, to, to his accomplishment. To yes, mm. yes. But the government also named one of the bungalows in Vilpattu in his name. Yes, but that also was destroyed by LTT, and again he built it again and again. Yes. And only two, two bungalows are there in others' names, that is R.L. Spittle and Tilo Hoffman. The people, a few people know about it. Yes, yes. So, so um, um, Douglas, um, I just want to start talking. I mean, I'm just kind of, I'm, I don't really have an agenda here. Uh, on average, uh, when, yeah. whenever there's a problem in Sri Lanka, people always say, well, the, the authorities have to do something about this. The authorities have to do something about this. But the authorities are never really there. You know, I mean, the so-called authorities are either not interested or they're powerless. Um, so when we talk about the authorities, what we mean is number one, the politicians, and number two, the institutes that, that, that have been founded, for example, like the wildlife department or the forest department. So what, what, the, what the point I'm trying to get is that there have been some politicians who are very interested in, in wildlife, haven't they? Haven't, haven't they? And uh, Tilo Hoffman was quite influential in 
at least working with some of those few politicians who were interested in the environment. Yeah, you're correct. There are there are a few politicians who are interested in wildlife, but uh, the reason for the authorities, I mean, the professionals who are in charge of the wildlife department and other departments involving nature is that uh, they are not do, uh, allowed to do a correct job. What I mean is, now uh, I don't want to mention the name, one, one director general uh, left uh, within one year because he yes. said, uh, I am not allowed to do it because uh, every time the minister wants me to do a thing where I don't want yes. to do. So yes. what happened was he left. So there was a good person. Uh, if he stayed, he would have put something correct. So still the problems are there. Though there are good ministers, good MPs and all, uh, still the path is not clear. Yes. And and this is, I, I want to talk about an area that is not covered in your book, which is that there are many, many private organizations as well in Sri Lanka, including tourist companies and plant planting companies who are actually interested in the environment as well. For example, especially now, I mean, uh, the tea, tea is still very important. And uh, I think that more and more uh, plantations are now interested in incorporating uh, wildlife reserves into their tea plantations. Would you say that that's true? Um, no, there are, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, people in the hill country interested in wildlife and who want to save the wildlife because yes. I know a friend of mine, uh, they have meetings and discuss how to do this. And uh, but uh, ultimately they need the collaboration or support from the government. Otherwise, there's money involved. No? So they have to put up uh, uh, to point um, guards and, and others uh, when they see a leopard being noosed or caught or killed. Yes, yes, uh, immediately yes, they yes. have to go there. But yes. there is no provisions for that. And yes. a few people are working for the wildlife department. So, um, Douglas, I want to ask you, um, now, are there any private companies who, um, who, who are also landowners who are actually interested in conservation in this respect, who might be able to maybe in the future play a bigger role in conserving some of these forests? Um, there may be landowners, but what I know is there are a lot of uh, banks which help us to save the uh, environment. I mean, the lorries and other magazines are yes, helped yes. by them. Yes. So uh, sometimes they may be having land, I don't know. But uh, but there is a movement by the wildlife society also, those who are interested in giving their land to make it preserves yes. to do it. And recently, one of our committee members has bought a mountain forest right. using all his savings. Yes. So like that, uh, there are people who are trying to do something. Yes, yes. Um, like, I mean, Tilo Hoffman was very much connected with lots of planters and plantations, and he must have had good, powerful friends who were involved in the plantation industry. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I don't know, because once he's gone, yes. all those connections are gone, I think. Like I mean, he was he was very much into coconut coconut estates and yeah, but uh, I don't know whether there is a person like him to take over. Or don't know whether still they have estates. I am not sure. Babas. Right. Okay. 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 That's that's a fair point. Um, now, that that there is a well. That there actually there are one or two other things I want to I want to bring bring in here. Um, so we've been talking about the possibility of private private actors uh, becoming becoming more involved. Um, I want to just talk about room for optimism in the future. I mean, what are the what are the areas where you can see positive things happening in the future? Is there there has to be room for optimism, even though they're we are in the middle of a bit of a crisis right now? Yeah, yeah. Now actually, uh, what I know is uh, unlike earlier, there are more active uh, young people yes. uh, who are organized and have their own societies. And uh, whenever something go wrong, they come on the media and speak against it. So unlike earlier, now there are a lot of enthusiastic uh, young people. So I think they'll take over one day 
and uh, we, we we can have a positive attitude one day it will be okay but uh, the problem is uh, it has to be helped by the politicians otherwise very difficult just shouting will not help uh, well maybe sooner or later there might be uh, the institutes the institutes will probably have more power than the politicians because generally most politicians are short term short term people but yeah. maybe the institutes that they have to set up for example that's the wildlife department and the forest department maybe they could um, they could become they could become they could be strengthened yeah 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 they could be strengthened but uh, uh, they should be given more power to think and work uh, without interference from the political authority that is what i feel you see like one of the interesting things i picked up from uh, my conversation with uh, philo hoffman was he was he actually mentioned that uh, that uh, president premadas was actually quite a uh, it might sound like a surprise but president premadas was quite into wildlife he actually said that yeah he, he was really really interested in wildlife and he had a panglo in yala also what i mean is uh, he used to go uh, whenever he has time to yala and uh, do you know uh, uh, now myself and another friend of mine uh, got um, the birds songs recorded in our country before these things die away yes. and we gave the record to president premadas when he was president yes. or, or, yes. or prime minister yes. so yes. he was really interested we both went and met him he said okay do more things is very good and yes. uh, he, he was uh, really interested in my life yes i mean another politician that comes up in your book is um, i think that one of the one of the first prime ministers who's uh, who's uh, um who who probably died a little bit too too early i can't remember exactly who this prime minister is but it's one of these famous names it's either dudley or d s senanayaka which one yeah. who was interested in my life it, it, it is it is d s senanayaka he is the man d s senanayaka right he's the right. person who, who formed the advice uh, what i mean is uh, the fauna and flora ordinance the committee yes. there were nine uh, out of nine six were wildlife uh, society presidents Yes, yes, yes. Who yes. prepared this ordinance? Who still yes, yes. 1939 ordinance? So yes. he was really interested in wildlife. Yes. Even uh, actually, JR was interested. Now, now Douglas, many many people in Sri Lanka sometimes like to criticize uh, foreigners. They like to say, "Well, what are these people do, do, doing in our country, and what 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 do they know about our wildlife?" Uh, this should be this should be this should be a matter for Sri Lankans who who actually know the form. uh what do you have to say to that in the context of people like tilo hoffman what i have to say is actually it will be funny because one day mr hoffman told me when he was going in the plane he coming to sri lanka there were three ministers seated in front of him and they were looking at the window through the window and saying that is that that is that that is that hoffman was listening and said no no that is not that that is this 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 they were no. shocked because hoffman knew every inch of sri lanka you ministers yes. you know Yes, no, that is yeah. uh, the answer. Is that so? The foreigner, yes. uh, because foreigner is not uh, walking in the Perahara; he is watching yeah. the Perahara. No, so yes, he yes. knows what is happening in Sri Lanka, yes. and uh, the foreigner will know better than us. Yeah, well, in, obviously, in some some situations that might be true because I mean we are now living in a global global world now. So yeah. this is the interesting thing: is you have actually titled your book. I mean, this is a wonderful title, "The Faithful Foreigner." That's the title you gave. Yeah. so tilo hoffman was foreign but at the same time he was extremely sri lankan as well yeah he, he used to say uh, i am a sri lankan so actually yes. he would never say i am a foreign yes. so i gave that title and i insisted that uh, to mention the man who saved singaraja so he gave that name underneath because uh, there are other people who are trying to get this name to what i mean is uh, not and time to get the credit that time to do do place yes. was not given credit yes you, you have lots of i mean i mean we understand that it wasn't just tilo hoffman but he was probably the right catalyst at the right time i mean he is the one who went and approached jr daiwadan and persuaded him to stop the logging yeah not only that he wrote lot of articles uh, against now people from india came and say no 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 cut it in 20 years time yes. there will be another young girl so yes. he wrote uh, attack in them in full yes. uh, detail in uh, local press yes. so he was fighting from the beginning because he, his idea is never give up till it's finish 
he is my my he advised to me is follow up till it is over so yes. he didn't allow anybody to uh, uh, say something wrong because uh, there was a, another idea from a, it's called master plan after yes. the after this thing was over uh, they they want to cut all the large trees in all jungles even yes. in national parks yes. that also yes. we stopped got the wildlife society got moving and stopped it like that a lot of things are there where society has done and yes. one also was instrumental in it yes yes uh, now, now 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 there has been a lot of interest in your book uh, uh, all, from all around the world and many many uh, universities and uh, international libraries have uh, have got copies of your book uh, yeah. but but uh, you still have some copies remaining and uh, i'm going to be giving some links about how people can get hold of uh, your book yeah. and i believe that your book is probably one of the most comprehensive accounts of how how that that rainforest that great rainforest was saved which is still yeah. still under threat which is still under threat still under um, threat yes so I, I think that i think that maybe we could theoretically have a few more conversations in the future but I think that I'm going to be providing some links to the listen, listeners uh, just in case they want to uh, uh, get hold of a, a copy of this book. And I think that, I mean, there are many, uh, like you uh, uh, you and your agents, you, you are in a position to post copies of this book all around. Yeah, the world, aren't you? I, I, I'll be able to post it. Yes, yes. You're in a position I to think post I, some I will copies. tackle it uh, alone. Yes, yes. And you know, I think it's a wonderful thing that our public, public, public publishing companies are very interested in books like this, and they're still coming out. And I just have to say that this book is actually a, a, an amazing accomplishment uh, with lots and lots of historical information. I mean, we are talking all the way from the 1930s uh, to the almost the present day. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I know, actually, uh, now. Hoffman did this with uh, danger because according to Petya Kuda's review, he says uh, Singaraja uh, 1970-70 era in which several foreigners were booted out, out for, for, for far less reason. It's weak volumes for Hoffman diplomacy that he endured even the most intolerant governments despite often coming into country with them and as the years were on accumulating a formal formidable body of uh, rivals who would madly have seen the back of him because yes. he, he was very gentlemanly he knew how to tackle the problem so yes. though a lot of people against him the government later recognized him and gave the most important the lanka ratna award to him and uh, he was recognized once the battle was over yeah. So Douglas, uh, so thank you very much for, 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 for this opportunity to, to discuss your book and uh, we will be posting some links about it. And I wish you, I wish you well. And for the moment, uh, I'm, I'm bidding you goodbye from, from our listeners and from myself. And let's just be optimistic about the wildlife, uh, wildlife in Sri Lanka for the moment. So thank you very much for your time. Do you have any, par any, any parting words? Uh, only thing... Uh... I can send the books to people who want it because the more people read it, the more they will love this country and think about saving the available forest. Otherwise, it will go away. Yes, yes. So on that, on that um, sort of like quite, on that note, uh, I, will, I will leave this interview with you for the moment and hopefully we might catch up with you or, or at least we'll be able to make more of this story in the future. Thank you very yes. much for your time, Douglas. Okay, thank you. Thank you.